All right, welcome to another tutorial. This one's gonna be like a plugin spotlight on shared preferences. Um, so here's a lesson plan for today. We're gonna to go over what the plugin does and what it's used for. And I've decided for this tutorial to put the versions of everything that I'm using in the readme so it's a, you can tell more easily if the thing's getting out of date or something like that. So yeah, we're gonna use shared preferences 2.0.8. Uh, then we're gonna model our preferences, model meaning uh, to JSON, from JSON, and all the variables that we're gonna have in our preferences that the user can change. And we're going to use these plugins here and dependency, sorry, to um, build our generated files so we can store our preferences as JSON in the shared preferences plugin. Uh, then we're going to make a service to get and set them. Um, so that's going to wrap that data layer of the uh, nitty gritty JSON. And then our block is going to use that, uh, that service in our UI to make our UI reactive to changes in preferences. And then we're just going to unit test that service. Okay, so here's the example app and what I've got here is some stuff just so we can see the styling change because the preference that we are going to adjust is the theme of the app. So dark mode, light mode, or system. And system, it's not really clear what that means. Uh, it, the app will look up. So if the user has set their phone globally to be like, yeah, I use dark mode whenever it's available, uh, this app would be dark mode because the default value I put there is system. So you can see going to light mode doesn't do anything because it's already light mode, but dark mode makes it go to dark mode. And then we've got this restore button to restore all to the default values. Okay, so let's go into the plugin and what it does here. Okay, so here's shared preferences and the version that I'm using here. Um, so the plugin, it's for persistent storage of simple data and it's not to be used for storing critical data or um, sensitive data. So things that are private like tokens or um, you know, passwords, remembered passwords and stuff. Do not put anything critical or anything private in this plugin. It is for really simple preferences. Like, do I, you know, one good thing to use it for is like, you show your user a dialog and it has a never show again button. You could put that they never want to see that again in this. Like that's not a mission critical sort of thing. And the consequence of them accidentally seeing that dialog again is very low. They just click it again. It's not a big deal. Okay, so to use this plugin, we just add the dependency and the API for it couldn't be simpler. Uh, it's got one of the smallest examples I've seen, even though this plugin is really, really powerful. So all you gotta do is get the instance of the shared preferences, and then it's got some methods like get int, set int, stuff like that, and strings, and then you just get the value and set it. Um, so yeah, super, super easy, and it's able to be tested via this mock method, so you can mock what values you want it to use in your test. So yeah, we're gonna do all of that. Okay, so let's hop into the code here. And first, let's go over the preferences that I'm going to use. So this app only has one preference, which is the theme mode. Um, so first, maybe let's go into what theme mode actually is in main here. So in material app, you can provide a theme, a dark theme, and also a theme mode. So if you provide a theme and a dark theme, the theme mode is gonna control which one of these it uses, right? So if you go, this is an enum, and it's got three values. There's system, which is that your system looks it up, what they've you know selected in their in their settings. Always use light mode or always use dark mode. So the user is going to be able to pick between those three values, and where we got to put that value is into this theme mode. Uh, so obviously, if you're going to do this, you would need to define both a dark theme and a light theme. I've just used the default values the material gives us, uh, but you know you could go dot copy with and make any adjustments that you want to either of these but they're very good starting points. So you don't need to change every single thing, uh, just the things that you want to change. So yeah, our preferences model, uh, it's a class and it's JSON serializable. And we're gonna use to JSON and from JSON to store the preferences. And the reason that I like doing it that way, opposed to having every single key being like an individual thing, uh, is because then if we add to this model, uh, we really don't need to change much anywhere else as far as the parsing goes. It's gonna make it really, really easy to extend things. So if I wanted to you know, put a new Boolean here, all I'd need to do is add a new Boolean with a name, and then I would just need to make sure it's got a default value. So I put this comment here, make sure all fields have default values. So when you add new ones, parsing doesn't crash for existing users who don't have that new field saved. So let's imagine uh, I had a new field, you know, file, final bool show help dialogue or something like that and it's not nullable, it's got no question mark, and it also doesn't have a default value. Uh, imagine you had an existing user who's using your app, and then in a, in a new version you've added that Boolean, it's going to try to parse the values 
and it's not going to be there because they had an old app version and it's actually going to crash because it didn't have a default value and it's not knowable. So you really got to make sure that you put your default values here and the default values are quite convenient because it means that these things can never be null, uh, which makes them a little easier to use elsewhere. You don't need to use null operators and stuff like that. So here is the constructor that the to JSON or from JSON is going to use. And here's a factory constructor to make our code a little more readable when we instantiate this with some default values. Um, so obviously this is a lot of code for just one variable, but I just wanted to make it really extensible so you could see, you know, if you wanted to add final bool, final int, other stuff, um, you could put it in here really easily. So here's the to JSON and from JSON. Uh, this is a factory constructor and it just points at this generated method. And in my other tutorials, I went over how to generate these and I'll go over it briefly again here in a, in a moment. And then the to JSON returns a map that we're going to save into our preferences of from this object. Um, the hash code and the equality are useful for unit tests and they're um, really important for if you want to check if this preference is, is the same as this preference and they're two different objects. If you don't override this equality, uh, it's always going to say they're different. So we want preferences that have the same values to be equal to each other. And then to mutate this object, what we're going to do is copy with. Um, so instead of making a new one over and over, if somebody uh, changed just one preference, uh, sorry, use like the default constructor. We're just going to use copy with and change that one thing. Uh, so yeah, again, this looks a little silly with only one value, but you can see how this is really extensible. And then two string is just for us for the console. So in unit tests, if um, something fails, it'll go preferences theme mode dot dark is not the expected value theme mode dot light or something like that. Uh, instead of just saying instance of preferences is not equal to instance of preferences, which isn't very helpful for us, helpful for us as developers. Okay, so to create the generated file, we need to make sure that we put this part here. So it puts part of the file in another file. And the convention for this is .g for generated. And then we run this monster of a command. And then this file pops out, which has the to JSON or from JSON. And it will automatically generate you this map to use enums, which is also really helpful because this is a, an enum that I didn't even make. This is in material. Um, but yeah, it's going to know how to parse all this stuff to JSON from JSON. And then we just need to use these generated methods in our preferences model right here. And that's that. So there's our preferences model. So next up, what we're going to do is make a service to get and set. And the service is going to actually use the plugin. So we go over here to our, per, uh, our service. Uh, I've made an abstract class to behave like an interface and what we're going to define is a get for our preferences and shared preferences. The get is actually synchronous. It does not need to be a future, which is kind of nice. And then the set, which is asynchronous. And then the clear, which is, is asynchronous. Asynchronous meaning it needs to return a future. Uh, so yeah, very simple interface, just some CRUD type stuff, create, read, and update and destroy. Um, so here's the actual implementation of that service. So we're going to need a key to store this stuff under because every preference is under a key. And we're actually only going to have one preference saved that actually houses all of the preferences for the app. You don't have to do it this way. You could make a key for every single thing, but then when you add a new value, you're going to have to add a new key and you're going to have to add to your parsing and you have to add a lot of different things. The way that I've got it set up here, it's a lot easier to add new values, I think. So hopefully you'll agree with that. Uh, so this is going to need a shared preferences. This is the instance of the actual plugin. The creation of this is asynchronous, um, but this expects it to just already be made and be passed in. So here we have uh, implementing of it. First method is clear. This one is just a pointer basically to the existing clear. So that's going to delete everything in the preferences. Uh, the get is going to get all of the JSON under the string prefs key and then parse it into a preference. So we can see that here. So we're going to get string prefs key. We're actually saving the value as a JSON encoded string. And then when we get it, it might be null if they've never saved anything before, in which case we can just return the default values. Else if it's not node, uh, sorry, not null, we can decode it and then get our preferences from JSON. So to, to get the stuff that they've actually stored before. And then set here, we're going to store the entire preferences JSON as a string under prefs key. Uh, so we take in some preferences, we change that to JSON and encode it. Encoding it makes it a string. We're going to set string, prefs key, and data, and we just await that and um, don't return anything from there. But yeah, this the setting is asynchronous. Uh, so yeah, the API to use the preferences is very, very simple. Uh, really, really small amount of code. It's a very, very nice plugin.
So let's see how we're going to use that in our UI to make our preferences actually take effect for the user. Uh, so to do that, we're going to use a block pattern again, and we're going to use Flutter block 7.3.1. So let's go to our block. So this block is a lot, lot smaller than some of the ones in my other tutorials. Um, this one, I didn't even really feel the need to do error handling. So there's no try catches or error states or anything like that. Um, so my state is just the preferences. Uh, there's no state that's going to wrap that because I didn't really feel the need for loading or for error states for this one, just because it changes so quickly and it shouldn't ever fail. So this just makes the code really, really small, really, really easy. So yeah, this, this qubit here, needs a preferences service. And this is the interface, right? This is the interface, not the concrete one. So if you wanted to unit test this or um, you know, just hide these uh, um, implementations from the other classes, that's what you would want to do there. So it needs a service. And in this case, I've passed in the initial state here uh, because getting this initial state is going to be asynchronous. Um, and that initial state, I've set this up so that the initial state of the block is the preferences that the user has set in their previous session. So it needs to be restored and that's going to be asynchronous um, in other places in the code. Obviously it's synchronous here. And just two really, really tiny methods to just call the methods on our service. So change preferences, we need a new preferences. All we're going to do is set it and admit that it worked. Um, so if this happened to throw, uh, that would not really be caught. It would just be thrown in async world and then not, this admit would never be called. Uh, so just keep in mind, this doesn't actually have any error handling, but I don't feel like this is error prone, so I didn't put it in there. And then delete all preferences just restores you to the default values. So we clear it, and then we admit that the default values have been set. Okay, so let's look at now our UI and how we're going to use that in the UI to make our UI reactive to changes in there. So let's look at main first. So main just runs my app, and what we need is a block and we need to build that block. And remember I said that there's some asynchronous work to build this block now because we need to not only get the instance of shared prefs, which is asynchronous, we also are going to read the values that the user has stored. Uh, so I've put this into a future uh, builder, which bu builds us our block. And I got this method here to do that. So our method here, we're going to get our instance of shared prefs. Uh, we're going to build our service with those prefs. And then we're going to make our block with the service and the values that were stored there. And remember, if there was nothing stored there, this is just going to return the default values. Uh, so that's what they would see on the first install. Uh, I did leave this comment here. So this should probably happen in a splash screen so we don't delay the creation of material app. Uh, so this is just like a to-do, uh, just for the sake of making the tutorial smaller, this is just happening and it's blocking the creation of our material app, right? So we see the future builder, it needs to complete before we get the material app down here. While it's loading, it's just a size box dot shrink. So imagine you had a lot more asynchronous work going on in your app, like restoring the user session or loading a config file or stuff like that. Um, you definitely want this to happen in a splash screen so they're not just seeing like a black screen. Um, so I just left that as a to do, just as a mental note, you know, you don't want to do too, too much asynchronous work before displaying your material app, your user's not going to see anything at all. Uh, but yeah, we get our block made. And once the block is made, which is has data and it's not null, I just like to check it's null as well. I think that's actually the definition of has data, but I find this is a little more readable. Uh, yeah, we're going to make our block provider and that's going to block, uh, provide that block to our app and all the widgets underneath it in the tree. And the create is just going to return that instance that we've already made down here. And then we're going to immediately make a block builder. And the block builder is the preferences qubit and the preferences. Um, and it looks it up and it's just going to find this one, obviously, because it's the next one up in the widget tree. And then we're going to be able to make our app based on those preferences. So it's got to be outside of the material app if we want to use these preferences, uh, because the theme mode that our user is going to use is looked up from the preferences here. And then we're just going to return that home screen. Um, so yeah, you can see if the theme mode changed in your preferences, if it was dark mode, it's going to use dark mode. If it's light mode, it's going to use light mode. So let's look at our home screen here. So the home screen needs a scaffold key to show the side drawer. And I've just got a couple widgets here that don't really do anything just so we can observe the difference between light mode and dark mode. So there's a floating action button here that does nothing. And then a list view with some bunch of random tiles that also just effectively do nothing. Um, 
So yeah, the button here that does work is the, the side drawer button, and that's going to open our drawer. The drawer is side drawer, which is a component that I've made. So let's look at the side drawer. So the side drawer is a stateless widget. It's got some padding at the top because it'll build stuff way up here. Um, it's just got a kind of random image in a circle, and then some list tiles. The only one that actually does something is the settings. The other ones are just kind of examples again. And the settings is going to push that setting screen. So let's look at the settings screen. This is a screen that is going to actually change the settings that the user has made. Um, so it's got a back button with the automatically apply leading. It's got a floating action button to restore the default settings. I've added a little to-do here, which is that this is kind of a destructive action. And if they've made a whole bunch of changes to the preference, they're like, oh, what does this button do? If that instantly deleted all their settings, they might be kind of upset. So you probably want a dialogue here, but I didn't put one just to keep it smaller. But yeah, this just looks up the block via context.read of this class, and it just calls delete all preferences. So the default is system. So if we go light and then restore, it goes back to system. And then I've made this a list view under the implication that you'd probably have a bunch of settings here and you would scroll. Of course, with only one here, it doesn't scroll at all. Um, but yeah, there's just the one theme selector. So the theme selector needs the current state of preferences. Um, which comes from this block builder here. So this screen is also reactive to the changes, uh, to preferences. I'm sorry, everything in your app will be, but uh, if we want access to the preferences object, then it's it's we need it from the block builder. Um, so yeah, then we just make a radio list tile for each of the theme modes. If this was a longer enum, I might consider doing like theme mode dot values dot map and map them into the tiles because there's only three. I figured it wasn't too bad to just make them all in line. Uh, so it's in a card with a little bit of padding to show that they're like a group. And then they, there's the light mode and the dark mode in the system. So each radio list tile is going to have the type theme mode. When you pass this in, it makes the rest of the values strongly typed. So it's a little easier to write the rest of the code instead of it being dynamic. So the value of this one is dark. The group value is the value that's currently selected. And that comes from preferences. These are the current preferences. And on changed, we're just going to call that copy with preferences copy with with the new theme mode that we want. And this change preferences is the method that's on our qubit. So yeah, they're all work the exact same except for the title and the current value and the value that it's calling copy with. Um, so yeah, that's that's the UI, and we can see that the different things change with the dark mode. And again, it's just the default material light and dark mode. But yeah, super, super easy and a lot of power, like having a whole dark mode and light mode in an app, you know, that sounds like a lot of work and in Flutter, it's it's not too bad. Um, so last thing we're gonna do is just unit test our service. So service means logic, which means unit tests. Oh, that's not the right file, but that is the one we're going to test. Uh, testing this stuff is really important, right? This is the brains of your app. So we're gonna write just a couple unit tests to show you how that would be done because this preference is plugin does allow you to test. And um, you got to be a little cautious with uh, singleton type plugins like this. Um, when there's a singleton, they're not always going to be all that easy to unit test, but share preferences is. So we're going to see how to do that. So we're going to make a group of tests and the group is going to have the class name in it so that it prints to the console nicely. And I just got two tests right now. So with nothing saved, gets the default values. So to mock the values that we want shared preferences to return, we use this set mock initial values method. This is a static method, so you need to call it via the class name here. And we're just gonna use an empty map. So we make our service, and we don't really need to mock anything other than this, what it's gonna return. We're gonna pass the instance into here. We're just gonna get our preferences and see what comes out. We're gonna expect that that's a default values because we didn't actually have anything saved. Next test, uh, with something actually saved, get should return it. So in this one, we expect theme mode.light to be our saved preferences. So this is like our expected value. So we're gonna mock that. And remember, this is actually saved under the preferences key as a JSON string. Uh, so that's our, our setup for the test, and we're gonna call to JSON in there. Then we're gonna make our service again and get them again. And in this case, we expect the theme mode to be light because that's what we've mocked it to be. So let's just run those guys. And then we get the my preferences service test and the two of them pass, which is great. So I hope you enjoyed. This was a little smaller tutorial. It's a really easy plugin to use and it's got a lot of power to it.